Words lying. Oh, it did in that thing where it's playing too fast again. We're already screwed. Fuck the world. <laughs>
Yes. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I Hi. I forgot about the super sick uh, bonus raccoon footage. Anyway, it kind of makes it. It, it, it kind of sucked until the raccoons ended. The <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to sit through until the raccoons. Anyway, <laughs> thanks. Uh, I'll hand it out. Thanks for joining us. Our host, brains behind the operation, MC Warlord. Now it sounds uh, Mr. Dennis Dredd from Weird yeah. War Gallery in Portland, Oregon, is joining me, Dave. Hell Hill, yeah! Thanks for having and, me, guys. And Chris, wait. What's up? Chris. What's up, Dennis, and everyone else? Yeah, thanks for joining us for uh, our super sick. We have there's Andrew Williams in Mel Melbourne, Australia. People in Sweden and Queens. It's, it's global. This is so sick. I can't believe how sick it is just like out of the gate. It's so it feels sick. fucking sick. I have beers. I have, there's raccoons. There's beard. I got a fox sweater. The <laughs> fox sweater. I look for a rabbit one and they're just nothing like what you got out there. Yeah, they don't they don't make those, Chris. I looked. One more, We're, one more. I wanted uh, to get you one, but then this, this party got a little less sick. Just mentioning raise, that. Raise your drinks to this fantastic new record, gentlemen. Yeah, I, I love it, man. Congratulations! It's really a, a smoker, man. Thank you. Oh, put your. Oh, I have my mask. We'll, we'll have bonus mask. We have. I got my mask here too. This is the. This is the record. How to draw fire? It came out today. What? Today, yeah, Chris. Someone should have told you. I emailed you. It came out today. Oh my god! I gotta get one of those. Oh wait, I have one. Yeah, it's got purple, purple vinyl. Is yours? Let me see if mine's purple too, dude. Yeah, and no. uh, it's super sick. And then on the back. There's a picture of me and you, Chris. That's us in the middle. And then our bandmates, Erica Osterhout on bass, and Tom Bo Bojour, who's also the producer of the record. And they're going to join us momentarily. Um, awesome. I can't wait. That's to just, we didn't want to have everyone all at once because we thought let, we have to have somewhere to go from. We have to. <laughs> from here. Wanna, yeah, we don't want to start. Someone I, has a rabbit tie, I see. There's a rabbit tie. I have a rat oh spirometer. I have a rabbit tie and a fox carding. Carding send oh, okay. Send a picture. Or we won't my, believe it. And we'll I'll post it right now. There's also, and this is bonus. If you we're getting the plugs. I learned this from my late great friend Joe Franklin. Get the plugs out of the way, and then we'll just start partying. <laughs> if you get but you can go get you can get our record on purple vinyl or CD at tprecords.com. That's for the unsigned versions, which arguably have a higher value. But if you would like a lesser value, ones that are signed by me and Chris personally in our in our home off. with our own <laughs> germs and skank all over them, uh they will be mailed to you by me personally, which is uh, code for it will take longer than you expect. <laughs> and they come with these cool holograph stickers of the album cover entirely free of charge. The first 200 uh, orders, you get a gold skull. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah. only if you order 200. Let's, yeah. make, let's be clear. And then the solid, other solid gold. And then there's what else? There's T-shirts, uh, and just That's... within the just within the last few minutes, I uploaded. There's beanies, which is to say, winter hats or toques, as they are sometimes known, embroidered by Chris's wife Nancy Reifert herself. Do you say winter hats or winter hats? Both. That's both, Chris. They're winter hats for winners. Sweet. That's pretty cool. I have to get it's one. Cool. There are a way to keep warm and let people know you're not exactly crazy about bullshit. <laughs> wear a painted doll hat. It's a way of letting people saying, "Hey, what's up, fucker?" without saying a word. Anyway, so 
And so we can get all that on our Bandcamp page, and there's the address in the in the corner. So there, those are the plugs. Um, should we bring out on the more attractive members of the band? Yeah, let's bring them out. Let's let's do it. Let's trot them out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're younger than us too. Why well, we know no we know are. Eric is Tom is a, Tom is ageless. We don't even know. <laughs> but uh um wait when some Frank Sterling says when autopsy practiced for your demo, you practiced in my living room in Antioch. What's up, Frank? Long time no see. Antioch, isn't that like a biblical? You pre that's not like a biblical thing. Isn't That's it? That's putting it mildly. <laughs> oh man. Um but hi anyway, Frank. Frank, there's I'm looking through there's lot Frank's awesome. I mean, we're gonna Dennis has a, a Dennis, how, what's going on out there in Portland? Uh you know, right now it's pouring down rain, which has uh mostly helped extinguish the fires and our air quality is uh healthy. At the moment, but we've we've been through the ringer this year out here, man. We we just had you know the whole state, the whole West Coast, basically in fire. But we're trying to keep it light, Dennis. Don't. <laughs> yeah. It makes you realize it's the little things you need, like breathable air. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've dealt with like the you know. Speaking of Antioch in the Bible, we've we've dealt with everything but the plague of locusts. Oh, oh that's it's right. coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's, coming. It. Yeah, it's coming. I know. And um, now, and now, and now this. And now the painted everything doll. Else, now this. <laughs> I know. Painted doll. How to draw a fire. It's out over. now on the greatest record label in town or in the world. <laughs> TP Records. In the world. Um, Fine label. And uh, so, but yeah, it's the soundtrack. Soundtrack to the apocalypse basically Hopefully. um so we've timed it perfectly um and then maybe we'll see if the other bandmates are are drinking and then we'll be like hey what's everyone drinking and then everyone hold up their drinks and we can <laughs> put it in the chat and be like oh that's good i love tank teenies um anyway <laughs> wait what tank teenies fucking that? asshole it's a it's a martini with made with tang <laughs> I'm a, I was afraid that's what you said. No, that's <laughs> exactly what I said. That's all that childhood memory. That and powdered milk. You wait. You drank martinis as a child. Tang tea. No, just tang. But oh powdered. yeah. You ever have powdered milk when you're a kid? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, it was terrible. There was always those little floaty bits on the top that wouldn't go yeah. away. I know. <laughs> it was not always unclear why it was in powdered form, and why did we ever stop? Uh, you have a good question. It's no, like right. those government bricks of cheese. You guys eat, eat every government cheese? No, I'm a, I'm a fan of oh, that. Chris, you ever eat the giant like loaf of government cheese? Yeah, it's because like my one bread. of my grandfathers used to get it from the uh, VA uh, uh, store. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it the stuff. Like, I never had it. What What is it made out of? No one knows. You've been missing uh, out, Dave. I only had Brie and Grey when I was a kid. I don't know. <laughs> it was actually surprisingly good. I, I actually liked it. Yeah. Um, it's made from the blood of your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we have question. We have fan-based questions. If anyone has important questions, you can put them in the chat there, and we'll try to answer them. We gotta got narrow it. it down because I think we have at least three hundred questions. What do we do? Hey, just keep pouring in. We're gonna have to do a lottery system. Hey, Wade Snook says, "Hey, Dave. Hey, Chris. Hey, Dennis. Fuck you, Wade. No, just kidding. Hey, hey, Wade. I was just trying to be. Uh, uh, I'm horrible. I'm really drunk. <laughs> yeah. A loathsome. No, we love Wade. Wag. Wade makes all our t-shirts, and uh, and that's why they smell that way. No, just kidding. He's the best. Wade is I'm, the best. I'm way. I won't even remember this. Anyway, um, let let's let's bring our bandmates in here and yeah. heat things up. Um, I'll bring Eric in first, and then I'll bring Tom. I'm gonna hit the buttons one after another, but just so if I hit Tom, then we'll hit sausage overload too quickly. So I'll bring 
Eric. Here she is. Here's Erica. Hi. What's hey, up? Erica. And here Hi. is Tom. Hey, no Tom. way. There we go. Hey, you guys. Hi. Hey, hey. What's happening, everyone? Hi. Chill. I haven't seen Erica in like uh, forever. Hi. I know. We, I just realized this is the first we've seen live action Erica since. Just when? I don't even know. It's not since the last show we did, is it? Yeah, I think so. Really? Whoa! Oh my gosh! That's the last time I saw Tom and Erica was in Portland. Or uh, yeah, probably Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle was the last Man. time I saw you. Wow! It's nice to see your faces. <laughs> yeah, you guys look great. Oh, thanks. Uh, it's right. helpful that it's from the chest up, you know, quarantine. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Did it's you all haloed by this like uh, cherubic glow behind him? I know. Is that is it annoying? Is it is it? No, it looks visually... beautiful, and the beard okay. looks very waxed. You look great. Oh, thank you. I feel it's very. I feel like um, I'm 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 going to be raptured up in about you know five. Minutes. <laughs> That's what it looks like again. <laughs> Erica has sort of like a a sophisticated, uh, Studio glamorous. Vibe? Glamorous vibe, and Tom is, is California AM gold. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the, the golden hour all the time where Tom yeah. is. It's oh, pretty, yeah, all day. It's always like this. It's pretty sick. It's, it's, it's three in the morning here. And Dennis's, Dennis's room where he is looks like... Um, it's like his childhood bedroom. <laughs> well, no. Well, with the the drapes or whatever, it looks like um, when they're trying to find the killer, and then they finally find him, and they're like, "Oh wow, there it is." <laughs> He's behind that cemetery curtain. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's that weird curtain. The curtain gives it a a murdery murderous vibe. So is Dennis the murderer, or is he harboring the murderer? I, I don't think know. there's going to be a twist ending, and, and a woman's going to take a mask off and kill me, and it's going to be a, a duck or something. Wait the, a minute. The killer's going to be a duck, or the mask is going to be a duck? I think the killer is a duck with a human mask on. <laughs> I was hoping for a duck wearing a duck mask, but... <laughs> Wait, I like it's this cool. idea about the, the duck. Oh, I have, a, I have an exciting update. Um, if I can figure out the, the technology... Um, Jason Spiro has sent me the photo of, well, I'll figure it out. He sent a photo in his fox sweater and rabbit tie, which is, wow. could not possibly be more on brand for this uh, future. <laughs> you guys have, a, have you had any super fans get like painted doll tattoos yet or anything of like the album cover art? That's funny yeah. you should mention that. Yeah. Um, if you look on our Instagram, really? I, I guess if I, uh, yeah, a fan in Australia got from our first album, which I like to call the first album. Um, no, the the self titled debut <laughs> debut produced sorry, by shit. Tom Bojor of California Gold fame. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, a woman on the cover of the record is of uh, some feet. And there's on the one, is like an eye on the one foot and then a lightning bolt on the other. Anyway, the long, long story long, she got that tattooed on her feet. And, uh, wow. and, uh, so I was pretty pumped about that. It's so Speaking, cool. I drew, not to brag, awesome. but I, I drew I'm the kind album of shocked cover. That you didn't make her feet the album cover for the new album. Oh, shit. No, I feel like an idiot. And you know what we should do? Him. Shit gets real. <laughs> oh, this is. You know what we should do? We should. Um, that could be like the cover. See, this is the problem with the the futuristic times we live in is that they don't make like bootlegs anymore, do they? Oh, really? they do. They, oh, do. they do. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I stand corrected. Just ask Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You'll get, yeah. you'll get no royalties at all. <laughs> um, no, I've made several autopsy uh, bootlegs. <laughs> those, are, those are the best ones. That's why we haven't sent you a cease and desist yet. 
It's called yeah. They're it's called Dave Shit Talks Autopsy Volume One, <laughs> and it's just me at shows, but with the phone next to my mouth, being like, "Oh, what the fuck was that?" No, no. I think you covered that with Witch Taint pretty well, actually. The shit talking autopsy. I know. No, I. Oh, that's true, actually. And we um, rebuked you as well. I would never shit. I love autopsy. <laughs> Not the shit fan talking out, fun. I think the last time I saw Autopsy, though, I passed out during the show, not to brag. Me as well. <laughs> it was at Montreal Death Fest. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's a long like day. That was such a good one. Yeah, you were there for that too, Dennis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the saddest little tragedies of 2020 was the uh, the Portland Autopsy show that we had scheduled for Halloween night on a full moon having to be canceled. It's a heartbreaker. Wait, it's I this. was gonna try and go. Wait, well, you know, we'll we'll do it eventually, and you, I insist that you come, Erica. It, it's this Halloween. Well, it's not anymore, but it was gonna be. But couldn't I mean, you know, I mean, this is totally, you know, off the record. <laughs> uh, but couldn't arguably but we all meet here first? Couldn't we all meet in Portland and have you play for us? <laughs> Social distanced crowd of four. Uh, yeah, let's do it. No pressure, you, Chris. You no, sound, no, no. It's you it's uh, it's official. Um, <laughs> I just put it on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> we got some. Uh, oh, I, I think. It, the fun, one of the funnest things looking in the chat is people have names that you can tell they're from all over the world. Can, like, can I get, can I I just can't get one them. piece of, hey, Dave? Yeah, it's I Dave. need witnesses so that I actually do this. I need to get one piece of band business taken care of. I have a pink Hamer Scarab base in storage that I've been telling Erica that I'm going to send it to her for like a year. And now everybody has seen that I say it will be done before November 1st. That's right. Okay, I have or, witnesses. Or Thank what? You. what? What happens if it's not accomplished? Oh. Then he has to uh, get a painted doll tattoo on his butt. Oh, yes. yeah. Who's, oh. who's to All say right. he does Okay. The gauntlet has been dropped. <laughs> 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 what sort of tattoo? Like the logo or like full album cover I'd, art like i'd like to propose the the sort of pyramid with the eye on the top of the new record right on his left ass cheek oh it's great watching. what about a replica of the feet tattoos but on butt cheeks oh. i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a tattoo of a kid <laughs> getting her feet tattooed you know, you know what i'm saying <laughs> that oh, like man. the eyeball on right, so one cheek and then the the lightning bolt on the other cheek the, the you know what I, thing is is that i really just need to avoid this at all costs so i gotta ship that base to you you have to you know what i realized I need uh, on on the the cover of our brand new album <laughs> Fire, cool. Fire, which came out today is available on a band camp page um the the eye the sort of all-seeing eye i realized after it showed up in physical form that it looks not unlike that sh the shit emoji that is popular <laughs> <laughs> it's That's very similar. Brown eye, Dave. The brown eye. What's it called? It's called the brown eye. Oh, is that what it's called? You have you have young. You have children. You know the lingo. <laughs> I can see it now. I'm, I'm speaking specifically to your artwork. I know. I, uh, yeah, but it does look like that shit emoji, doesn't it? <laughs> Where is everybody right now? We're all we thought we're all over the the country, not all over the world. Uh, I'm in Denver. Oh, you're in Denver. I thought you were in Oakland. That's right. You're in Denver. I moved here after, like, right after the um, the I West. Totally Coast. remember this now. Yeah. You took a road trip with your brother. Yeah. Yeah, I totally remember now. Okay. Yeah, it was awesome. That's that's killer, Tom. Where are you at? I'm uh, in upstate New York near Woodstock on the on the top of a hill. Oh, that's, that's, that's a beautiful that's countryside. Big. Yeah, which is why I try and avoid New York City and New Jersey as much as possible. Are you farming hippies? Yes. 
Yeah. Good. Right. Good. We have a big crop this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are you? So you were asking Erica. You were asking Tom if, if they themselves were hippies who farm. Whereas when you first said it, and I had to run it through again, the, when you said, "Are you farming hippies?" I thought I you meant like planting hippies in the ground. Yeah, and that's what things. I yeah. thought. I when, did. And then I ran it through again. And I was like, "That's not what she meant." I think it is because if have you seen uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers and like yeah. the growing in pods, see he reaps the living and harvests the hippies. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. He's Wait. gonna harvest harvest enough hippie hair to make a wig for Chris. I could use it. No, it's just some of the dudes... live shows, so you can headbang and you know. Yeah, fun. I know bald headbanging slightly awkward. I gotta confess. No. No, you oh. do you. It's like Bob Bob Vigna from Immolation. He rocks it. Yeah, but he no. does other things like he wields his guitar like a sword and stuff and Yeah, shapes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love I love Bob oh. yeah, Immolation. They're great. Yeah. Couldn't you get like a sweet uh would you ever wear like a sweet wig for headbanging purposes? I'm not saying yeah. you should. Yeah. You see, um, like on a scale of one to ten, how sweet are we talking? Like super sick, <laughs> su super sick, six. Yeah, like, where did Tom go? I would try we, it. We totally bored Tom, and he just we walked away. And made a I went. To, I, I had to get a beer. You had to check. Where, it out. Oh yeah, good. Oh, we were gonna we, cheers! We were gonna cheers the new record, guys. Oh what yeah, let's cheers! What's everyone? We're at a party. What's everyone drinking? Did we say yet? Ooh. Jameson. Oh, dangerous! I'm having. Yeah. Krumbacher, dark, a German oh. beer. Yes. I'm having a New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blanc. That's because you're a lady. Right. I'm a fucking lady. So. <laughs> Congrats again to a fantastic record. Erica and Tom, you missed it earlier, but it's a fucking great record. No, they've ah. heard it. They, they're they on it. They play. I mean, Tom recorded it. They know. They didn't hear me saying it. Oh, 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 I, I, mis I misunderstood what you meant. Which, by the Fantastic way, record. you can get it on purple vinyl, CD, uh, and CD at tprecords.com. Or if you prefer uh, a signed copy, go to Painted Doll. Uh, go to our Bandcamp page. And we have, we, we have hats, too, beanies, which are sewn by Nancy Reifert. So statistically speaking... Uh, there's a fifth, maybe I don't, I don't know what's the percentage, but maybe Chris himself will have handled it. I don't even know. You, Nancy, could be like, "Hey, Chris, hand me a hat." <laughs> like, Here. I don't know. I don't know how you guys operate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been to your house, but I haven't yeah. seen. Not I haven't seen. House. I feel like you guys are on your best behavior when I'm. I don't when shit might go down when it's like hat time i don't know you, you've been to the old house not this one all bets are off i've been to the old i'm excited to come to the new house i've been to the old house um not to brag a few times i think <laughs> i've slept at the old house and got up to all did. sorts of nonsense in the, in the small hours of the night when everyone was asleep playing as the record what playing with cats <laughs> playing with cats as the record slept soundly i Let's see over here. You, you I, can play with raccoons and skunks. Hell yeah! I love it. Yeah, Tom, I was gonna say the hat could be packaged by one of the raccoons from the video. Oh, oh. We're, we're we're training them, but we're not that far advanced yet. <laughs> so far, we've just trained them to eat cat food that we throw over the the porch. They're gonna be bootleggers if they start doing that. I, I hope so. Oh my gosh! If <laughs> what if they if, stole all of them? <laughs> If I'm raccoon... selling bootleg painted doll t shirts in front of Chris's house, <laughs> <laughs> if raccoons bootlegged our stuff, 2020 would be fully in the win column for me. Redeem. Yeah, it would redeem ev everything. <laughs> <laughs> All cool now. Raccoons wow. do have opposable thumbs, they're super smart. Wait, yeah. I thought they didn't have opposable thumbs, they do. I think they do because they, they can do. they can open garbage pail lids and and like they can turn doorknobs and stuff. They can milk a goat. <laughs> they can milk a goat. Oh, wait, wait Eric, I want you to back up a minute. How do you know that? Is that on YouTube? I need to see it. <laughs> I, just, I, I just happen to know. <laughs> 
I, I did have a raccoon a, the top of my hand a couple of weeks ago. You had what? A raccoon slapped the top of my hand a couple of weeks ago. I was getting ready to throw some food out for it, and it wasn't quick enough, and I felt this bap. No <laughs> problem, but I felt the, the little padded foot. It was pretty incredible. Really? Terrifying. He was just wow. like, get your shit together? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you feel much quicker. It might have been like a knuckle pound for the new record, you know? Like, well That's done. True. <laughs> oh, you mean the one available at tprecords.com? Give it. <laughs> you know, I keep slipping in the branding. Slip. Yeah. yeah. You, mean the, you mean the one from TP Records on purple vinyl available now? Bandcamp is down below. Sign so copy to paintedall.bandcamp.com. We haven't addressed the album enough. Is that what you're saying? No, no. I'm just slipping sales. See, the tricky thing is the more you mention the selling, the more you sell, but the less people that's the more people leave, the more you do it. So it's a, it's, a, it's really a oh, dance. Shit. We already lost Tom once, but I know even even a, a band member themselves <laughs> left. I'm sorry. We should no, answer some of their questions, though. Oh, we I have questions like that that we didn't address their needs. Oh, we let's got plenty of time, Tom. We got plenty of time. Where are you going, man? I'm Although going nowhere. All about needs. I, I have a question for you guys that's uh, related to the year 2020 and maybe some of these questions. Uh, since this is the first time you're seeing each other, maybe since the last show, uh, like how did the songwriting and the recording process for the new record happen? Like were you guys ahead of the pandemic curve and doing it somewhat like remotely or what? Yeah, no, well, we shit was normal. I think it was pretty, yeah, we, we were way ahead of, uh, we tried to record, what, what, I don't even know the date. I mean, we, June, we, we, we recorded like, a, yeah. June last year. Yeah, we tend yeah. to record them like a year in advance, even though everyone's like, gosh, you guys are so prolific. How'd you put out a second album so fast? You're the best band ever. Um, the reality is we, yeah, we recorded it. Uh, yeah, tw June of 2019, we recorded it, and if I can go through the full history, for the first record, we practiced, I think, four times, Chris and I got together, and, and then, uh, for the next record, we were like, let's luxuriate and practice six times. I thought it was four again. It was four again, because we were like, well. But we wanted to luxuriate. We were the best. We're the best band, <laughs> and I even think even those four practices, we were kind of like, I don't know, can we leave? Um, it felt like time to, you know, we were like, let's get food. You book um, three hour practices. It's always too long. Three hours is always too much. Well, we practice for the first record, Chris and I. Every time I would, you know, as you guys know, I'm in show business, so every time I'd be in L Los Angeles doing show business. Uh, very famous. Um, Chris would drive down uh, to LA and we would get together and jam. And uh, so we would use this practice space. I forget what it's called. East, East, East LA side? East side rehearsal. Yeah. Sweet spot. Yeah. It's great. It's, it says on Cesar Chavez Boulevard or whatever street it's on. And, uh, but for this one, I kept being in, I was in San Francisco twice, which is kept, it happened twice. Um, and we practiced at the autopsy practice space. And um, we practiced not to four brag, but You've been there too. <laughs> not to brag. Everyone's been there but Tom. Everyone is super. Oh, Tom was there. I was I there. Tom was there. You haven't we, been there yet, Tom? I have to I, say. I was, I was oh, no, you have been there. there. Yeah. We yeah you you uh, wrestled with a broken amp. Yeah, I think I played through a PV bass amp. That was that my was, my that spare. Was was. Yeah, I have Tell to you say, there. you would think, and I you know I don't want to dwell on this because on the one hand you're like this is the coolest practice space I've ever seen. It's got naked ladies on the wall, cool rock posters. There's Testament has a big logo in the hallway. Uh, there's all sorts of cool stuff. But then on the other hand, you go, well, they've been here for 30 years. Maybe they vacuum. I don't know. No. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm glad you didn't. No, uh, it's the best. It only has one light. It has one. It's like practicing with an iPhone. I've had guys have. I'm drunk. I, I've. Um, Eva. <laughs> I was there one time for an autopsy practice, and in between songs, Erica got behind the drum kit and was like tearing it up, man. Multi instrumentalist right there. No one could believe remember it. That? Yeah. You remember that? It was like it was like after the after the band was done jamming, Erica starts like hammering away and like some like improv was happening or something. Yeah. yeah I remember. Yeah. I didn't know you could play drums, Erica. Oh yeah, like a boss, totally. Yeah, really? she was fucking killing no. it. <laughs> I mean, we have a drum kit in my living room here. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh she <laughs> well well played. I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> Can I just say the weird weirder than having a, a drum kit in your living room is having a Moog poster in your living room? Oh yeah. Well, you know, Paul is a big fan of Moog stuff. He's got a, a, a number of them, a whole synth station at the practice space. That's pretty serious. Is that really your living room? Yeah. I love it. Is there, a gong, is there a gong there too? Do you have a gong yeah, that, in your living that's room? That's mine. <laughs> oh my god! They just bought like a thirty-nine inch gong or something. At we went to the gem show here. Wait. So what do you guys? What what happens if you're entertaining? Yeah, this is how we entertain. You people just get behind the kit, kit, yeah. and then we got yeah. practice amps. Everyone plugs in. You can have a little jam. And there's the uh, like mesh heads on the. Um, on the drums, and we have those silly symbols with all the holes drilled on them. So sounds amazing. I wish I had that here. It's pretty That's awesome. Amazing. And yeah, if but the if guests you... aren't entertaining, uh, Erica just like gongs them, and they get hooked out of the house. Gong. <laughs> 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 so wait, wait Dave, um, Dave, you you rambled because you're because you're drunk. But did you all I'm... fly somewhere and record this record or what, man? I won't remember any of this. <laughs> um, I, so I'll, I'll text Tom tomorrow to ask him, like, how was that uh, record release party? Did I suck? Um, I can't believe you slipped me your number earlier. That was weird. But anyway. <laughs> um, wait, so wait. I have to say, Pavel Grindex, hello from UK, drinking here and raising glass to the screen. Thank you. Is there any way to kill postage prices from USA to Europe? I would buy literally everything from you. How do we do that? I don't. I don't know that. I will. Who's TP's distributor over there? Oh, oh, that's a good. Oh, that, you're smart. Maybe I mean, I know spot. you're smart, but I'm not. <laughs> is my point. I bet they uh, use ClearSpot. That might help a little bit. Season of Mist. You can get it from them and Nuclear Blast. I think you can really? get it from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like I like how surprised and impressed you are. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what did you think we don't have real distribution? No, I just like nuclear blast. I was I was kind of like surprised. I guess. Oh, why we're not metal enough for you, Erica? Uh, I don't. <laughs> we're plenty metal. No, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's on their site. Again, I'm really drunk and won't remember this, so we may not. Be. <laughs> Turns out to be a controversial question. <laughs> Can you cut the postage overseas? Yeah, I don't. No, Chris, but... Chris, and Dave flew to New Jersey. Thank oh, you, Tom. Oh, yeah, backing up to the. Yeah, no Tom, thank you, thank you for staying on point. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Chris and Dave flew to New Jersey. If, uh, wait, let me let me just oh. to, just to finish the uh, distribution in North America. Kenny from TP. Sony Orchard delivers the goods. Thank you, Kenny. So they're the brains. What's up, Kenny? Cool. Kenny, Kenny is, is the warlord at TP Records. He's a wonderful ah. man. I would say handsome and well-dressed man. And he has a great band, Mirror Queen. So there. He's watching over us. Make sure we don't fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> no. Wait, I'm sorry, Tom. So Tom was explaining how we recorded this incredible album. Thank you, Tom. How to Draw Fire, available on purple vinyl and CD at tprecords.com. Or if you want it signed, go to our Bandcamp page and also get a hat and shirts and stuff. Uh, yeah, so Chris and Dave flew to New Jersey, which is where I am. 
I just took and the train. I live in New York. You took State. the train. Right, right. You took the train. Then for <laughs> Erica's tracks, we sent her stuff to to Colorado in the in the emails. On the but, internet. In, yeah, in, the, the internet. In, we took it did on the internet. I've heard of that. But the bulk yeah. of, like really this is, you know, it starts with Chris and and Dave in a room staring at each other because having two line. people, two Oof. people who have only had four practices, is enough doing the basic track. That way you get that done, and then then you add on. Um, it was fun. It was a good. It was a good hang this time. I think our our New Jersey I, hang. I liked it. You know, what's interesting about it. I have to say is with this record we decided to luxuriate because we thought well we went platinum and with the first one probably we assume clearly and so we thought we did three days of tracking for the music on the first record let's do five for album two. First record tom has uh, with the greatest guitar collection of anyone i know oh, and <laughs> So we we used pretty much two guitars on the first record, and then the second record we were like, let's get fancy and use four or five. And then I think all the ones that weren't the two guitars we used on the first record we deleted. Or is that not true? Um, I'm trying to think. We deleted a lot. It was pretty much the same. A lot of them ended up. As you like to say, panned hard left and put on you. Um, yeah, the lesson but, is don't get fancy. I guess don't get fancy. It, it, I think we were still pretty disciplined. I mean, pretty Dave, disciplined. Dave, Dave, like I'm sure it frustrates Chris sometimes, but like Dave and I could probably and Chris plays a lot of the guitar on the album, but he's just like he, he, Chris is sort of like give me a fucking guitar and let me rock. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave and I could probably spend, if there was infinite money and time, three months recording guitar tracks. I believe not it. that it wouldn't be any good. Probably, <laughs> not, but we would, we could go completely insane. Yeah, um, with this pedal, that pedal, this pedal, that pedal, and then try four guitars with each one. Um, so we try. I try and really watch Chris when we're doing these records because he's the most mild mannered and tolerant person I've ever met, probably. But if once in a while, he really is. If if <laughs> if Dave and I get too deep into it with the guitars, I can see him starting to twitch a little bit. Like you know, like, <laughs> like, like, that was from fucking, the coffee you guys made. Just fucking track it, man. Just track it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about think about the thirteen floor elevators recording their their masterpieces on the whole band was on LSD while they were recording the whole thing. Oh, that's the and way they did it in like a matter of days, you know. Let's do that next time. Yeah, I ha I have I shouldn't say this. <laughs> Don't tell us what's in your freezer. <laughs> I, I have LSD. Um, in your freezer? This is a good question. Um, well, the reason I asked that, or, or the reason I mentioned that, is because Robin Westland has asked you guys collectively what 60s and 70s records uh, were influences or favorites. Oh, that's a good question. That's kind of the, how the start of the, the band started. Talking about that stuff? Really? Yeah, because if I can, you know, Chris and I met, I was just talking about this earlier today during my lengthy press, press junket that took place in my <laughs> mind. No, I was doing important interviews. But, um, yeah, Chris and I met. Autopsy was playing in Texas, and emotion, we met. Emotions ran high, and we kept in touch, and uh, we started trading 60s and Wait, 70s. Was that, the, was that the fest where you played guitar on stage with Thor? That's exact. Yeah, the house core. That's, that's the first time I met you. That, that's the first time I met you, actually. Oh that man, that was amazing. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, I played guitar for Thor. I was amazing. Sure. And but Chris and I went and Nancy, his wife, watched Goblin together. We kept in touch and started trading jams, 
from there, like Shocking Blue and uh, The Virgin Prunes. <laughs> Electric Prunes? Like, oh, there, there's, there's a band called Virgin Prunes. <laughs> you guys, there is Virgin Prunes too, but I again I won't remember that this. Mine out of the gutter. <laughs> I've kind of thought was like a weird like form of meth or something you guys did in Texas. No, like, well we, sh we shot some Virgin Prunes. What do <laughs> they sound? What is Virgin Prunes? Stayed sound high like, for like, like seven days. Or something? Wait, Virgin Prunes? What? Do they sound like crass? Basically, is like is it like one of those bands? I think Virgin Prunes was maybe like. Uh, my, as I'm recalling, I think it was the band that uh, the Edge from U2 had. Now that I'm pulling from my mental, Erica, would you mind hitting the gong real quick? <laughs> <laughs> so far away. <laughs> I've got, so, I've got some of the the ones we talked about sitting right here. Ooh, nice. This is oh. a good one, Saint Stephen. Right on, man. That's one of my yeah. favorites. Here's a good one. I Ultimate hope Robert spinach. West. Oh, Ultimate Spinach. Ultimate yeah. Spinach, yeah. First album. What up? Nine Flowers. I know. Oh shit. You know their their other album has Ballad of the Hip Death Goddess, which is like that's that's the one right there. That's the one, man. Here's a good one. The first Coven album. Oh yeah. yeah. Not yeah. not a witchcraft that everyone knows about, but man, the the vocals on that one are so nuts. What else we got? I got a couple good ones sitting around. First Frigid Pink album. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let's see. We got uh, Mr. Flood's Party. I mean, probably no one knows about that one. I don't know. What's that. that one called? I can't see that one too clearly. What's that called? Mr. Flood's Party. Oh, I don't know it, man. Tell us Here's about a it. Good one. Uh, you just got to hear it. And then uh, I got two more sitting right here handy. Uh, second Fever Tree album. Yep. And then this is a good one. Armageddon with uh, Keith Relf from the Yardbirds. Oh, yeah. wow. I think it's from like 75. It's kind of hard progressive rock. That's I think that's some of the stuff that we, some of the stuff I must have sent you, Dave. Just like, hey, here's some shit that I think's cool. Yeah, we would trade back and forth. And uh, and then when I, whenever I would be in the Bay Area, uh, doing, you know, because I'm as I mentioned earlier, I'm show business, it's not a big deal. Um, when I was, whenever I'd be out, I would no, I'd be in town doing, so humble. I'm in show, you need to understand, I'm in show business. And whenever, <laughs> no, uh, we, we would hang out and talk, and then eventually, Chris was like, uh, let's jam, or I don't know, I think you said it. I'm too shy, I would never have said it. Oh, no, no I, I, I just was like, yeah. Chris was, made the first move. I did. I think so. I'm very shy. I'm so very shy. <laughs> Never I say. Picked, I picked up on that. That's why I reached out. Like, let's. I, I didn't think about making a band or anything. No, I, I just was like, oh, next time you're in town, I got a, a jam spot over in Oakland. Let's make some, yeah, uh, noise or something like that. And that was, mm -hmm. and then it. Many of them were like, oh, let's. Maybe we could do like two songs and make a single. And then I think you're like, oh, let's, we could do an EP. We could do like four songs. And I remember at one point you're like, fuck it, let's write 10 no, songs. You, you said like a record. I was always trying to downplay it. You, you were always, it was the opposite. I was like, two songs. That's it. Stop. It. <laughs> That's it. No more. No less, no more. Oh, what? Wait, wait, it's wait. Like Chris was. Chris was like the aggressive rabbit, and you were the sly fox. See? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it just kept growing. And actually, like, we have... Oh, well, Tom, who's that with you? It's Dino. Dino? My Dino the Chug. Sup, dog? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, sweet boy. Oh, let's try to... <laughs> My sweet Lucy, she was here before, but she left. Oh. Erica and Tom, do you uh, do you have like any uh, '60s or '70s records that that are your favorites? That in, that might. Uh, oh, like I was even spot. thinking, Tom. Like when you produce the record, do you are are you listening to records from that era and trying to capture a sound or anything? You know, 
here's the thing. <laughs> no, because well, Dave sent me a bunch, like a huge. He sent me this huge play. I won't sit here and try and be like, oh, you know, I my level of knowledge of this, like of this stuff is so, you know, I'll just be like, I really like the creation. Um, but Dave sent me a huge playlist of stuff. Um, and I listened to it and I absorbed it. But to me, the important thing in terms of production was, this is a common thing. I'm going to try and make this mildly concise. I'm, I'm doing my best here. People want, when people reference 60s particularly stuff and, 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 and some 70s stuff, 70s stuff, but mainly 60s stuff, they have an idea in their head of this vibe that they want. But if you really try and replicate the recordings, you're creating a world where there's you can't hear the kick drum, you know, and everything was mushed together, unfortunately. So people want it to sound like that, but they don't want it to sound like that. And I think that that's a very, that's what I always try and do when people are like, I want it to be like this. You try and take the elements like the creepiness and the character of the guitars, um, and of the vocals, but you don't, you don't want to go too literal. Like, you know what, let's record the drums with one mic and then, or, or let's bounce everything and do it on four track. If you do that and you go too literal, you will end up at your mix and somebody will be like, Hey, can I hear more snare drum? Like, or could I, can you get like, make the snare drum brighter? And then, and then the answer will be like, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, so people do like, yeah. you try and capture the essence and the spirit and sort of like people going back to their flats in London and, and playing with their Ouija boards and, and, and doing weird Satan shit um, without the, the technological constraints. That's sort of always with Painted Doll, my, my thing is to like make it still sonically competitive, but not... But have but have all of that of the weirdness. That's there awesome. That's that, my was, answer. That, was, that was such a succinct, articulate answer. A, a caveman like me could understand that because I don't record or, or play music. Awesome. So, I don't think people really want it to. I mean, there are garage like you hear bands that go fully retro, but especially live, like this band is just fucking like it, it's like just watch yourself. Like, we're, we're we're heavy as shit, so like you don't want to you don't want to make a record that's like super retro sounding, and then you come see us la live, and it's like the dude from Autopsy and Erica and us just destroying people. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, with Mets and Boogie yeah. triple rectifier. <laughs> yes, yeah, man, Angle Powerball, bro. It it is really cool that that. Uh, that Painted Doll is the kind of band that can actually bring it so heavy live. You know, I, I think a lot of bands like this that that sort of piece it together, the way you all write and record, uh, probably can't pull it off live. But live is, is a, an awesome thing. Oh, thank you. It was fun playing that stuff live, especially with you guys. That was, that was incredible. There was a question was earlier in the from Luis Nieves, who I'm probably, I think I screwed up his name again. Uh, says will there be any live dates post pandemic and to that i say yes if the pandemic ever ends well adam nelson would like to know that if there are going to be live shows and you go on tour who will have the last word on the breakfast spread on tour the breakfast spread that's correct marmite vegemite but no oh. Ooh, eric is <laughs> eric is taking lead on breakfast <laughs> <laughs> you do you like Marmite and Vegemite? I love, I love it. Yeah. Me too. I, I actually ordered a couple of jar of each recently, not to brag. I, no I noticed. I've oh, seen yeah. breakfast posts. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I got some spreads over here. I remember yeah. going to a breakfast spread in Norway years ago, and ninety percent of it was different, like herrings. Oh yeah, I love that shit too. It was like mustard herring and this herring and that herring, and I loved it. It was amazing. So, oh, a, my favorite you, thing about nor like 
I love Norway, one of my favorite countries, but they have those the heart shaped waffles that are everywhere, like <laughs> for breakfast in every hotel. And then they have it out again later in the day or waffles and, and there's like brown cheese. It's a whole scene. That sounds I'm, incredible. I'm wasted. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I got I, I got two things for you guys. What? Looking at the, the comments here, we cured someone's genital herpes. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I saw oh, that. Hell yeah, yeah I, we did it. Is, wait, this sounds like a good time to plug the new record. <laughs> oh, yeah. The new record. You, mean you cured it with this? How <laughs> to Draw Fire out, out now on Purple Vinyl, CD, and digital. Go to tvrecords.com or painterdoll.bankand.com. Get t shirts and beanies sold by Chris's wife. Um, and uh, yeah, someone I, you know, I don't want to think this is spam, but it's, it's, it's a pleasure for me to write this testimony about how I got my genital herpes cured a month ago by pain and doll. Well, I call bullshit. Who says it's a pleasure to write a testimony, testimony about their genital her herpes, however it worked out. <laughs> Have we really, we've been infiltrated by a, a, a spam bot. That is, uh -oh. yes. But that's a mark of true success. What a sublime pleasure this has been just talking about it. It's been awesome. <laughs> wait, is that it continues on? Wait. Yeah, something about a uh, doctor. They were hurt and depressed. I don't know. Where are you even looking? I don't see that on my screen. <laughs> it's, uh, in the comments, there's a lengthy post about genital herpes. Does this end with like a nude picture of someone? Probably yeah, no. Totally. no photos, just no just way. testimony. I am available yeah. for marriage and exportation to your Dave. Country. Don't click that link, all right, or else this whole thing's gonna <laughs> crash. Uh, Wade Snook wants to know if we cure crabs. We don't uh, not we cure crabs. Lobster. What's that? We love lobster. Oh, <laughs> crabs are. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna are, <laughs> wait, are you talking about? Uh, uh, no, I know. It, are you talking about crabs? The gen, you're talking about. I've never had. <laughs> or are you talking about the food crabs? I was talking about the food, but since we were talking about the other thing, I decided to cut it short a little bit. I call bullshit on the food. I think it's too much work for. Too, it is a lot of work, but too little reward. It's to keep you busy and uh, to work off the Bloody Mary or mimosa or whatever you're drinking, you know? Kind of I like don't like it. What's that? Is it kind of like pistachios? Yeah. 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 I don't. <laughs> I just or like, like lychees. Um, yeah, I don't. I just like to shovel. <laughs> I don't like to like sit and work. I remember your food bib backstage, you know? What's that? Your food bib backstage. So I know. Yeah, so I could shovel. Yeah. I could shovel. Oh, you can get painted doll food bibs now too, by the way. <laughs> we however, yeah, however we can get the message out there. Go to paintedoll.bank. We're going we will keep adding more merchandise options. Dot foodbib.net. Go to TP so go Records. <laughs> I, I do want to say one thing, which is will be probably a little bit too sentimental. Oh. But in do my it. top uh in my top five things of why this whole year sucks was not getting to go play rock shows with you guys. Uh, the last time yeah. was fun. We no seriously, yeah. we had a good time last. It, like the the last that was fun. I was really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well, we'll we'll do it. You know, on the other side of all this, for sure. Twenty twenty five. There's, just, there's you know. a question from a from a guy named Vlad Gorbach who wants to know what the band thinks about streaming concerts, which might be a a way to I don't know. I'm in. I Did you guys yeah. ever stream a concert? I think if we didn't live in four different states, I've never played this record with them ever. You know, it might help. Yeah, that. we'd have to practice. <laughs> You only first. You'll need to stream a couple practices. <laughs> yeah, but that would be cool in itself. Just you know, yeah, people would see it coming together. 
We watched That's always uh, the hardest part is yeah, you gotta learn the songs and um learn the words. Oh yeah. We watched uh, Harley Flanagan did a did a Chromags live streaming uh, <laughs> concert on like it was like March 15th. It was like the day like we got the executive, you know, stay home order. And it was really weird because we were all kind of like huddled around a laptop, but like screaming all the Chromags lyrics and stuff. It was, I saw it, was it, was, it was actually really good. Have you ever read his book? What's that? Harley Flanagan's book. I haven't. I read John He's, Joseph John Joseph's book. I've read, but I haven't read Harley's yet. I, I read John's, and so I had to read Harley's. Harley's basically goes like this. There'll be like like four pages of him explaining stuff, and then he'll be like. And then we beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> it was kind of fucked up. Yeah, I and believe it. Starts it. another story. <laughs> like it's you know, he like talks a lot about having PTSD from his from his life as a skinhead living, you know, out on the streets and stuff. It's pretty. It's kind of interesting to watch him like hitting arriving at middle age as this like crazy, you know, former street skinhead. Yeah. I mean, that, every, every every like ten page, five pages in that book, they're just destroying someone. <laughs> that's that's sort of like, like what I don't under what I never understood about about hardcore. Like, because I started going to like New York hardcore shows in college when I moved from sunny Cleveland to New York, and I was never like a hardcore kid or whatever. But I would go to the shows and. And, and my friends who are really into hardcore would be like, I think there's going to be a big fight today. And I'd be like, why? Every why? Day. <laughs> yeah, I would just yeah. like, why would That's there... a pretty good. That was a pretty good, like, prediction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I would be like, well, I don't understand. Like, aren't we just going to listen to bands that we like? That's the idea. And they're like, no, no, no. There's going to be this guy's there, and then this guy's going to be there. And then these guys will be there, and then these other guys will be there, and there'll be a fight. I'm like, but it's music. Like, why... I didn't. I had no understanding of like why does everyone want to fight? Like, the thought, mad ball guys are gonna fuck up the guys from ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so it never made any sense to me. Uh, I saw the Chromags on the the uh, the first record that that Harley sang on, and to this day, Age I think of hardcore. Uh, no, no, no. Best no, wishes. No. Best wishes. It, best best wishes. wishes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think exactly. Carnivore opened that show. It was at the Ritz in New York City, and it was to this day, it was the like the most violent show I've ever seen. I could see it was, it. it was sold out. It was a lot of people, and it was like probably the the height of like you know skinhead crews in New York City. It was like the late '80s, and it was like kind of had become like a a trend sort of thing. And it was incredibly violent, and also awesome. I will say this, and then we'll move on from this. I saw the Bad Brains like dating myself, like '90 at the Ritz, and literally, kind of like Harley's book, we were just. I was just, I've never tried to be more invisible <laughs> in my life because every few minutes it seemed like the, the skinheads were just picking like a weak antelope from the pack, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and and like there was just like this thing of somebody getting kicked to like, and then yeah. I never tried to be smaller in my life. Just like, <laughs> like, like, like. But uh, yeah, New York rules, Dude, man. I think you're, you're near uh, you're near Woodstock. I think like doesn't Daryl Jennifer live up there? Daryl lives down my road. Yeah, cool. Oh, nice. Daryl's right down. He's, the he's road. like living in the Bad Brains neighborhood right now. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's right down there. And then this one restaurant that I go to sometimes, you will generally see Doctor No at the bar having a glass of Cabernet. That's killer, man. Nice. That's that's awesome. That's nice. Nice. It's I would, good to know those guys, uh, you know, aged gracefully, and they're not, uh, you know, riddled with PTSD from beating people up. I don't think, I think they got they, involved with that. The, the the they somehow transcended that. I could be wrong. I think they did not. The, I think they had other problems. Yeah, they had. Yeah. A, they're singer. <laughs> hey, I speaking would, of other problems, uh, Cal Carr wants to know what. Drug best accompanies Hawkwind's space ritual recording. <laughs> nice oh, segue. that's a good question. Everything. You like that segue? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Just raid your medicine cabinet and just eat it all. <laughs> wow. Sure. 
<laughs> My favorite good. part of uh, Space Ritual is the cover art by Barney Bubbles. You guys familiar with Barney Bubbles, the, the artist who did that record? I know, I know the the cover. It's amazing. Dude, in a way, Dave, your your cover for this new record is like almost like a Barney Bubbles uh, esque drawing, man. It's it's very heraldic and and awesome. Oh, thanks. It kind of looks like a Barney Bubbles drawing that somebody drew on, like, and I mean this in the best possible way, like a Barney Bubbles drawing that somebody drew on, like, their high school binder. Thank you. That's actually the, what I mentally try to do when I do the covers. You have I, don't, um, or, I don't mean that sarcastically or ironically. I mean that as the highest compliment. No, I, I genuinely, like, honestly, you know, well, granted, it's only been two covers, but when I sit down to do them, I try to think in terms of that I have 45 minutes before <laughs> class is over. <laughs> exactly. I mean, obviously, it takes longer than that, but I, I try to be like, I need to get this done because uh, Chris is going to ask me if it's done. And it's <laughs> no, no, but it's due and like there's. I happen there's to know that pressure. feeling. <laughs> there's pressure to get it done. So you know, if if you know, I don't. I try not to. I think similar to our recording process. You know, we don't we don't take like we have all the time in the world. But I think better better things happen when you approach things that way. Where did the where did the fox and the rabbit come from? It's like part of the mythos now. It's on. We, it's on everything. We that we can't answer unless Chris wants to. I was just stoked about the rabbit part because when you threw that out there, I was obsessing over Watership Down. I had just uh, reread the book and, and uh, was revisiting childhood memories about the brutality of the animated movie, which is pretty crazy. And I, it's I, I, horrifying. It was yeah, it's a heartbreaker, man. I know, but I read the book again. I'm like, oh, this is probably the best book ever. And then I I, uh, I sought out the soundtrack of the movie, and then I found the uh, uh, Bo Hansen album, music inspired by Watership Down, which probably no one yeah. knows about, but it's so good. And so I was right. Oh, it's great. He also he also did a Lord of the Rings record. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's like inspired from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he did four albums in the seventies, all primarily instrumental. And uh, I love Bo Hansen. He's worth looking up. But uh, I was in the right, right of the, in the thick of all that, like the, you know, rabbit mania, and just obsessing over it. And Dave made me a rabbit. <laughs> I'm sure not, not knowing any of that stuff, and it was, it was, uh, it was perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. So my haven't creepy looked, haven't looked back. Yeah, that was fantastic. What do we? We're we're past seven o'clock. Should we ride off into the uh, sunset? On a or, high note. What do you guys want to do? Yeah. I don't mean to address that. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just party all night. It's super sick. I mean, it is a super sick party. Yeah. To promote our album. How to draw fire? Very little about. <laughs> Where could I get that record if I wanted one? Oh, it's funny you ask. Get it at tprecords.com or anywhere digitally, really. Or if you want signed copies or t shirts and hats, uh, go to pain, painted uh. <laughs> I could not have said that any better. He's a professional. It's yeah, I know. Good. I don't know yeah, if you guys yeah, know this, but business. he's in uh, show business. I'm in show business. Let's be clear. <laughs> Talk about that for a while. You, you know, know one of the children? funniest things about the um, the last time I saw all four of you was the Seattle show, and it was really clear that right. the audience <laughs> the audience did not know that Dave is a professional comedian, <laughs> and <laughs> and we were up front like in tears like crying and and like there were a couple dudes that just wanted you guys to like shred and just start rocking and they went on like a hilarious like monologue and it was so funny to see the audience reaction to that <laughs> i like the part where my i had a malfunction with my uh my pedal and then you roasted me about how you put um the Craigslist ad that you put out to get the bass player said you had to be pro professional and have real equipment. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, man. scrambling to like make this thing work. I'm like, <laughs> like no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> was, that, was that the first show at uh, Hank's or that was the amp? Uh, oh, the amp at Hank's, yeah, just died right before my little bass lead too. It was perfect oh, timing. No, it was and terrible. Then, and then Tom's set list got stolen. Oh yeah, Travis, my friend Travis. Oh yeah, by Kevin Bacon's son. Yeah. <laughs> Every I was you know, like, dude, what I, the fuck? I've been screwed over by the Bacon you family so Travis. many times. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Being in show business, the Bacon family is often uh, hindered. When you dig deep you enough, they're always there. Yeah. You put it back. <laughs> that was that was fun. You guys, oh, yeah. what were those uh, monster magnet shows like? I really wanted to fly out for them, but uh, yeah. That the first. Oh man, I can't believe we actually got to do that. That's crazy. They were super fun. Yeah the the one in uh, New York was was incredible. Like we had a whole bunch of friends there from all over the place and at the gate. Yeah, yeah. Jo Jonas Stolhammer from yeah. Sweden. Was yeah, it the we, was it the first show you guys played together? Yeah, uh, third. I think that was the third one. Okay, there was Hanks, and then the one oh. with Mirror Queen, and then that one. Yeah, we played okay. with Mirror Queen yeah. label mates on TP at Mercury Lounge, and Hanks was the first night with um. <laughs> With who? Oh, with the Ribeye Brothers. With the oh, Ribeye yeah. Brothers, yeah. I I uh I was just stretching and I, I can't speak and stretch. <laughs> Chester, I believe. Ribeye Brothers. Yeah. And uh yeah, then we did Monster Magnet. And then there was the yeah, then we did the one in the jersey with the pizza ghost. I oh, I that's yeah. the that, I'm gonna grab a beer for this story. <laughs> <laughs> we uh well, see, there's a thing that I discovered. This will probably get me in trouble with everyone, including Erica. But there's this thing that happens. I've never been in a band like this before, but I'm just saying that it might have something to do. Did you just do. put a boa around your neck yeah. to tell I've the got, story? I've got a scarf. I've Please adjust scarf. the scarf. Yeah. <laughs> it's got, it might have something to do with you know Erica being in the band, but you get these... Uh, Creeps? It's, it's what I call the unnecessary hang. There's, yeah. an, uh, there's a factor of unnecessary backstage hang that happens where people show up and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they're there for like 20 minutes and you're like, well, why the fuck is this? Let, not a, they just, a, some of it may have to do with Erica being there. But then when we played in Jersey with Monster Magnet, I actually think there was this guy who kind of just sat down in our in our backstage room with us for about an hour. And I actually don't, think it had anything to do with Erica being there. I think it had to do with um, there being a pizza there. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah he, just, was... <laughs> he just I sat mean, there pizza, for Erica, uh, stick it around. Been, but, but it was, it, there was like literally a dude sitting there eating our pizza and talking to us about the Jersey metal scene for like an, an, an and hour. And he was friends with Misfits. He liked cocaine. Yes. And I think those were his two areas of interest. Yeah, also, none of you yeah. knew him. No, I, he no. also compliment. He said, "You know, you really remind me of like Smashing Pumpkins with the, the, the long hair and stuff." And I was just <laughs> like, "Uh, <laughs> yeah, like." Yeah. And then by the, by the time you get to the end, you realize he it, it is also revealed that he lives at home. It's yeah. it's like, I mean, there was but, a spoiler earlier that when he was eating your pizza. <laughs> right. But uh, but anyway, so, but no, the, tw the those shows were awesome. They were so they were actually incredibly cool to us. Monster. Oh Magnet. yeah. I mean, like, oh, they were so Magnet. nice. Oh, the nicest. Oh, cool. That's Dave awesome. Wendorf is yeah. the best. There, there was happy. no like. Go ahead. I was going to say Happy Chichester was on the Hank show also. Yeah, he, he also played with us. Go back um, oh, man. He Mercury. Twice. I'm Mercury. The last night that we played, he played as well. Mercury Park. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's Mercury right. Park. Yeah. Yeah. Also with the Ribeye Brothers. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was super I used to sick. See, um, I used to see Monster Magnet play at CBGB's uh, a bunch back in the back in the old days. 
Oh, they played nice. this really cool show. Chris, I think I've talked to you about this before, but they played, yeah. do you guys remember that, that like Grateful Dead bar called the Wetlands in New York City? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like a deadhead club, but they started doing hardcore and like metal shows toward the like late eighties. But Monster Magnet did this killer set that always made an impact on me because they came out and they did like two sets, you know, like bands in the like seventies and eighties would do like two or three sets a night. And Monster Magnet did this set where they played like their psychedelic music. Uh, no, they came out first and did like their heavy stuff, like their faster stuff. Then they took like a 15 minute break and came out and did like an hour long, just like they probably played tab 25 in its entirety, you know? That would be amazing. Oh, wow. With like a slideshow, like light show and stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, done by Tim Quinn from uh, Ribeye Brothers. That's who I does the light? it all together. Wait, is yeah, that who does the light? He did all that stuff. Uh, he, cool. did, he did our lights at uh, Williamsburg too, I believe. That's right. Was he yeah, in that band Daisy out. Chain maybe? Hey? I don't know. He he was in a band, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in, he was the original singer in Monster Magnet. The and original then, singer? Yeah, originally. Oh cool, man. That's awesome. I don't know why I said is the original singer? Yes, originally. It's re redundant. I'm guys, I've been drinking all day. I really <laughs> because our new album, How to Draw Fire, came out today. Get t shirt CDs. Oh, there's oh, the hat. The oh, there's the hat. These are awesome. Oh, we have hats. Chris, oh. put the hat on to let people know what hats are like. Oh, I'm ordering oh, hats. Are like this Look at that. You wow. And anyone can own that by uh, going to our Bandcamp page and shouting out whatever it costs. <laughs> it's a bargain at any price. Oh, it's super sick. Now, Dave, yeah. do you do the fulfillment for that? Who does the fulfillment on that? Uh, we haven't discussed how the hats will go down. I am in charge of uh, sending out the signed vinyl and CDs. So I would say those will take the longest to get to you. If you Did order you them. ship? Did they get shipped first to Chris and he signed them all and then shipped to you and you signed them all? I don't want to say how the sausage is made, but yes, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's either that or you've got a mean Chris Reefer uh, signature. No, we, we didn't. We want, we're purists. We thought, okay, let's good. do it <laughs> in a true way. So. Way. Um, I will do. I will sign my name and do all uh, any additional personalizations that are requested. Like wow. someone ordered one today for their mom and wanted me to sign it to the, their mom. So that's where I come in. Did you keep it clean? Uh, I haven't done it yet, so okay. jury's, jury's out. <laughs> I know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could go either way. <laughs> how how will you guys? How will you guys be like, what's the promotion strategy in like a COVID, in a COVID world? How do you promote this new record? Like you can't really go out and tour. What, what's it going to look like, man? This is it. This is it. We uh, have this party for another 10 minutes or so. And then, <laughs> no, the we tour. honestly, we really have to say, well, we'll tour, I guess, you know, we for sure will tour after the other side of uh, the plague when we're all living in other countries, if Trump wins. Um, <laughs> but uh, not to get political. Yeah, don't depress me. I'm actually in a good mood. We're yeah, kind yeah. of touring right now. We've got uh, we got New Jersey and Colorado and California and Ohio and Portland covered all at once. And can I say, as it gets darker... Say um, it. Tom. Tom is yeah. looking more and more just like enhanced. Yeah, Tom's popping. You're he blooming. is really popping. In the out of the screen. Is pure <laughs> yeah, I look like fucking Sinbad. <laughs> From the what movie, not the, the actor, not the actor. Oh, I thought you meant the 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 comedian and actor. No, no, no. Um, Which I thought so too. <laughs> Which Sinbad, are we talking, which Sinbad are we talking about? Because if, you, if we were talking about the films, there were several Sinbads. Uh-oh. There was uh, David Wayne, the son, son of uh, John Wayne in one. Uh, who else? 
Dennis, you should know this stuff. Hey, hey, don't put me on the spot, man. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought there was just the cartoon of Sinbad. What? No, there was, no like, uh, there was the Ray Harryhausen classic, man. Yeah, there was three of them. Yeah. I just got schooled. Seven I, Voyages of Sinbad. I remember seeing uh, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger and Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, as a double feature. Really? And it did, and it was incredible. Man, wow. I, my stepdad took me to see Jason and the Argonauts in uh, uh, at like a, a grindhouse film fest in, uh, when I was a kid, before I knew what a grind, grindhouse was. And he dropped me off there and like went outside and ran an errand and like everyone was smoking weed inside the movie theater. What's and, that? Like, uh, they were like clearly not like there to see the movie and it was like almost like a party in the room. And it was my first time experiencing that. It was like a like a huge moment, man. Look yeah. at this. Tom Hanks' favorite movie, apparently. Huh? Wait, which one? Jason and the Argonaut. Oh, man, it's a masterpiece. You ever oh. see it, Tom? I love that I have that not, movie. but I want to because I've heard, like, the Bernard Herrmann. That's, he, he did the soundtrack, right? He did the yeah. score. It's supposed yeah. to be, like, the best score ever. Plus, it's, like, that, that movie, like... like, like, <laughs> like well, no, no, no. I didn't mean it like that. That's just such a hard thing to say. It's like picking yeah. your favorite metal album. I mean, it's, a, right. it's an incredible score, but it's also, like... The, uh, the stop motion effects in it are amazing. I mean, everything about it is just so epic, you know? Maybe I'll watch it tonight. It's an incredible movie, man. Really good. I, I always think of that movie when, like, whenever I see, like, CGI. I hate CGI, generally speaking. I'd rather have Jason on the Argonauts. Totally. So that, yeah. Same. It just more... I like, how the, I like how the new video uses, like, Wicker Man... Uh, imagery it's really mm, awesome yeah oh th oh you see shit, how yeah. i just brought that back man you see how i brought that back yeah we played it at the beginning <laughs> um strategy yeah yeah we we stole that and uh <laughs> we've made a couple slick videos what, what was the uh inspiration to uh to use wicker man in that um it's in public domain no, uh, <laughs> the trailer is not the movie, right? It, uh, <laughs> no, I think the whole movie is in public oh, domain. Private. I could be wrong. I forget. Let's not talk about it anymore. <laughs> we're <gonna get> you. <laughs> no, now, no, we're, now we're in trouble. No, no. Yeah, it was, so nice. I think it was legal. Like every, everything in our videos that's stolen is totally legally legal. stolen. Yeah. <laughs> I was just reading an article that, uh, like Facebook and Instagram, I think starting this weekend are shutting down like live DJ sets because of licensing issues. You know, there's been people during the pandemic who like DJ from their home and stuff. And they're, they're, they're killing that platform because they're getting pressure from the, you know, record like Ask industry. And, and BMI. Wait, are you saying yeah, I can't yeah. do my DJ sets any longer? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying you should full board do your set, but you'll be an outlaw. You'll be a one percenter DJ. Fine, so be it. I don't I'm care. Actually, they do. You know, it'll. It, yeah, when, when you play music, it'll probably happen with this. They flag it, and then you have to go in and be like, "No, that's our song." Yeah. I don't know. You're the I got a weird. I I Sorry. posted like a, I made like a weird video for this like weird war art show that we're having next week, and I used a Credence Clearwater song for it, and it got flagged. But the weird thing was when they flagged it, they they listed all the countries that they won't play it in because of licensing, and it was like I don't know four countries I'd never even heard of, to be honest. Uh, so and the video is still there, but they killed it in certain territories. I don't know what that means, but we live in strange days, dystopian, post-apocalyptic oh, okay. future. Totally. Thank, Yo, thank Dave, you. Want to, you want to like, take Wait, us out with that uh, other video or what, man? Oh, yeah. Drive it home? I don't know. Is it time to drive it home? Yeah, yeah. I'm just that's, saying, that's I want to see this video. That's sort of perfect time because I'm, I'm going to be grounded if I don't go eat dinner. <laughs> um uh so everybody i'll get i'll yeah go get our record i'll fucking lose Where do you it get this thing i don't even know how to get it uh tprecords.com or 
paintedoll.bandcamp.com. Uh, and there's also hats. You heard me. There's Erica. Thank you for putting my picture on there. I was not expecting that. Really? Yeah. Likewise. Well, Chris <laughs> didn't want to, but I was like, Chris, <laughs> I really. Chris was like, no, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, Chris, come on. <laughs> like, if you put their pictures on, you got to take mine off. Yeah, he really <laughs> fought. It was, you know, we rarely fight, but gosh, that was a bad one. <laughs> Chris is um, literally the meanest guy I've ever met in my life. Oh, he's the worst. He's he was worst. totally fine with my my picture being on there, right? It was just Erica. Yeah, it's just me, yeah. Oh, Chris has been texting me this whole time being like, you fucking asshole. Um, <laughs> That's why you haven't seen my hands. <laughs> he's like, what you are you even it? What are you even doing, you fucking idiot? Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say is, um, yeah, paintedoll.bandcam.com for t-shirts, hats, and sign. And, uh, but, but get our record and make everyone listen to it all over the world. So uh, when we get on the other side of this pandemic, we'll come out and we'll be able to have pizza with everybody again. The most important thing is that we need to be able to play Paris, France for reasons that that we need to play in France. Oh, for reasons we won't discuss. Yeah. It must, that must, re, I'm just trying to realize, like project that realization. I feel, well, I'm going to secret it right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm in, I'm in, like the, uh, yeah, I yeah. Think, I think that'll be uh, reasonable to accomplish as soon as the pandemic is over and it's safe to travel. You guys are yeah. in Paris. Yes. We're you know where yeah. When it's safe to travel, you guys are going to play the Enchanted Forest with me. Oh, yes. yeah. That sounds incredible. Yes. A weird War show and Painted Doll's going to going to play inside the Enchanted Forest amusement park. They they had like a super brutal year because uh they I don't know if you guys heard but oh, they they had a super brutal year? Go on. <laughs> Did they get burned down or no? Uh, they didn't no, get burned out, but they actually members. Yeah. They, they lost their family members like in the fire. Like it was a really oh my God, brutal. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, you know, I'm joking. Oregon, around. Oregon's been on fire, but oh. they're 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 holding strong and they're gonna they're they're holding it down. And next next year, if it's safe, Painted Doll is gonna play at Enchanted Forest. Yes. and yeah. Paris France. And Paris France. And, France. and that and consecutive France. days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like your tour. And God. Eric is yeah. in charge of yeah. the Marmite breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. In, in all seriousness, though, I mean, uh, you guys, the, the record is super great. I love it. I think it's an awesome album. Oh, well thanks. done. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks. We did it. Against did yeah, you did. It's really killer, man. Should we go out and uh, play one of our slick videos from the new record hell yeah only, I think only so, the yeah. slickest one we can find okay get ready to have your ass handed to you thank you everybody <laughs> and thank you to to dennis dread for being the master of ceremonies and and chris <laughs> for uh having just a, a nice glow tom strong across the board erica moog poster i gotta go back to it and a gong. <laughs> and a gong. Um, all right, let's go. Well, thank you guys, everybody. Everyone stay safe, healthy, and we'll see you in Paris, which is in France. Great to see you all. <laughs> yeah, thank you.